Hi, I'm James Schilling Law. I'm here at Virtuoso Travel Week in Las Vegas, as I am every August. And I'm here with Gilad Berenstein, who is on the board of Virtuoso and also Brook Bay Capital. Uh, I met first met Gilad when he had a technology company. And he actually is now running a wonderful tech summit for Virtuoso. We actually interviewed him in Dubai. He had a, a smaller version of it. Uh, there was another larger version of it this year. Unfortunately, my plane was delayed, so I couldn't get there. So we thought we'd sit down with Gilad to see what happened during this tech summit. What were the, what were the outcomes? I know it, it was a fabulous event, and everybody kept talking about it. And I'm like, I can't believe I missed it. But we're going to find out. I'm going to not miss it here because he's going to tell me everything that did happen. Of course, through his eyes. But he he's oversees the thing, so he should know. You're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Yeah, first of all, great to see you here. Again, I'm really sorry I missed it. Me too. It's always good to see you. And it's been more than 10 years since we first sat down for a conversation. That is true. It's hard to believe time flies right? like this. So anyway, so the tech summit, how many people attended this? We had over 350 people sign up for the summit mm -hmm. um, from both within the network, and we had over 100 guests from outside the networks, entrepreneurs and investors join us as well. That's amazing. Now, you did a couple things. You, you, you had speakers from technology firms outside travel, and then you also had some, some sort of new companies that you identified that are in travel and doing this. Talk first about who showed up from the outside world. Uh, that, that you thought was going to be beneficial for all of us to hear. Yeah, absolutely. So we had a number of guests from outside the traditional element of the travel industry. So one was a company called Built, which is one of the fastest growing financial tech companies in the United States or fintech startups. And they're in the world of helping people who rent be able to get credit and get points and to benefit from that. And of course, travel is at the core of their vision for this platform they're building. So they were a perfect example of the travelization of finance, which is one of the themes I'm focused about in the world of travel technology as we see Chase and so many other banks bring yeah. travel into the center of their offering. Another thing we did this year that was new is we had an academic panel where in many industries where I work there's a lot of connection between industry and academia and a little bit less so in the travel and hospitality space. So we brought the dean of FIU in Florida, one of the senior lecturers from Cornell, and the guy who runs the innovation for um, UNLV here in Las Vegas to have a conversation about how we as an industry can support academia and of course how academia can support us. And what was came out of that? Well, one of the things is they do research and they want to do research on things that are real. None of us want to work on theoretical things that no one's ever going to use. So one of the things they ask from industry is for us to share with them what are challenges, opportunities, and things that we're excited about in order for them to be able to research and create you know, data and information that benefits all of us. So that was one. The other is, of course, engaging with students, which I do all the time, and it's always a blast. Yeah. Uh, any other takeaways from some of the speakers during the, the general session? Yeah. So one of my favorite speakers was our friend Carolyn from Deloitte. She actually joined us for a second year this year. And one of the things she's working on is what she calls the four C's of travel recommendations. And the three core ones are comfort, convenience, and clout. And she created this triangle, and she really helped us think about how certain travelers prioritize things differently. Some people really want the clout of being right. the first person on the plane or being in the biggest um, deck on the ship or something like that. And some people really want comfort and convenience. So she used this cool example of the one in hundred uh, loyalty number is all about convenience. No one knows you have the loyalty number. No one's given you street cred for that. But it's really nice to have someone answer the phone quickly. Where on the other hand, you know, being the first person aboard a flight is something that everyone gets to see and gives you a lot of clout. So I thought it was really interesting as we all talk about recommendation engines and this mental framework she's building. Now, you also had people, as I said, from outside the business who may not understand virtuoso or travel. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, some of them may say, you know, um, travel advisors are, are gone, uh, travelers are going away. We actually had a little incident the other day where the head of Booking.com predicted the end of travel agents once again uh, uh, because of AI. Yeah. Uh, so did you have anything like that where people came in and were kind of astounded that, oh, wow, these guys are here and wow, they're doing it? Yeah, absolutely. So as we all know, this is not the first time that it's been predicted that travel advisors are over. And it was, of course, wrong last time. It'll be wrong again um, this time. And one of my favorite things, one of our speakers from the outside posted after leaving on LinkedIn in, this very beautiful note she started do you think travel advisors are dying question 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 lol um, was her answer um, and I'll tell you on a serious note one of the things I'm most proud of with the impact of our summit is that we take startups that before coming here never considered luxury never considered travel agencies as a part of their market or focus area and leave here being focused on this space and I always say we don't just want to innovate within our agencies within our network
network. We want outside innovators to come in and help us bring better technology, better data, et cetera. So that's one of the key metrics, and the answer is almost all of them who came in here not thinking about agencies and advisors left here with that being something at the forefront of their mind. Yeah, and of course, if they stayed along, around for uh, the rest of the conference, they would be astounded at what they saw if they went to the general session on, sa on Sunday, right? Yeah, and that's one of the things, one of our goals is to teach them about both the advisor profession in general and about the Virtuoso network. So we invite them to stay for the opening session, and even on Monday, David Cole who's one of the most eloquent speakers. Yeah, from of, Yeah, the most eloquent speaker gives them a tour and really teaches them what are the suppliers doing here, what are the advisors doing, and why is everyone here, and why is it such an important event in the world of luxury travel? No, it's amazing you know, what you can do to educate these people. Every time. So they, they seem to like, oh, I didn't know this was here. Exactly. And, and, and here, here we are, and going every year, 4,000, 5,000 uh, yeah. travel advisors and suppliers gathering here. Now, I assume AI was at least addressed to some extent. Uh, what, what came out of it uh, that, that from your perspective uh, that's kind of interesting or helpful? Yeah, so one of the things we changed this year is last year we had AI as one of the deep dive tracks. But of course, it doesn't make sense anymore. Every track is now an AI track. So we took that away because of course all the startups are using it. Now, there's a lot of things that I, that I took away from that, but one of the things I wanted to highlight this year is different types of AI and different types of use cases. Far too often in the media, we hear about just Gen AI, which is a very powerful tool. Because but it's the most current and it's, it seems to be growing exponentially, right? And it's very powerful, but it's only one part of AI. So the example I always use here is travel happens in the physical world, in physical space. Computer vision is a type of AI that's really good at understanding how space is used and what people do within it. So my goal was to bring in different startups using different types of AI and different AI use cases to really show the network all the versatility in addition to, of course, all the cool Gen AI tools that are out there. Well, I remember we were, I forget where we were, I think we were in Montreal at the symposium a couple years ago and we had a lot of AI speakers and I, 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 I swear I'd gone through two or three years, or, or a year at least, of hearing people talking about AI. And some people knew what they were talking about and some people were just kind of, oh, this must be a hot topic, I'll, I'll give them a talk yeah. about it. Uh, you had one that was really good, and uh, but it's not like we're now so used to it now and everybody's using it. But the whole, the genesis of it was that it's not a threat. It may be a, a, a help for a lot of the folks uh, in Virtuoso and a lot of the suppliers. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, the first thing I said it to Virtuoso 10 years ago in Berlin is technology can be your superpower or your competitor, and it's your choice which one it becomes what you do with it. Well, in fact, and most people are deciding this is going to work for us. Yep. Um, you also had a, a lot of the sort of startup, not everything was a complete startup, but you always have a good collection of travel technology startup yeah. and new companies uh, what were some that came that really jumped out at you that were interesting uh, I mean the old days used to have the incubator program that was kind of trying to you know help these companies you know grow and they could actually use the virtuoso uh, as a testing ground but what were some this year that really s stood out yeah I mean a lot so uh, trip boutique is one that I've heard from members and advisors over and over again one thing that they do is they allow you to do personalization on four different layers a traveler layer an advisor layer an agency layer and a virtuoso layer, meaning that if my advisor has never been to a certain place, we can look at the agency or at virtuoso to fill to backfill that. So that was one that was really exciting. Guest OS is another one on the hotel side that has incredibly powerful um, AI concierges for answering basic questions. Can I bring my dog? What's your dress code? Things like that. But answer in a way that feels like you're connecting with a human and getting, getting a real answer. Another non-tech innovation that I loved was intimacy moons, focusing on couples going on trips that are looking for more than just fun, want to work on their relationship, want to work on themselves. I met, I met her at the party afterwards. And I was like, you were at this tech conference? I was kind of was somewhat astounded because she, she's a, a, a relationship, she's yeah. actually a sex therapist, yeah. but that's another story. Very interesting story. And she said, yeah, I was at the tech summit. Absolutely. And one of the deep dives was what I call traveler perspectives. And the whole idea was to focus on startups catering to different types of customers with different needs. Mm -hmm. So we had one company that was focused on accessibility. It's called Wheel the World and helping people in wheelchairs and other accessibility issues access travel. We had another company that was focused on wellness. We had another company focused on sustainability. Um, we were unable to have Be My Eyes this year, which is a company that helps blind people travel. Hopefully right. we can have them next year. Um, but we really wanted to focus on different types of travelers, things that we might call niche, but in reality are actually really large segments of our market sure. and are much more than a small niche. Now, um, you got like two tech summits this year with the one in Dubai and now the bigger one here. Um, I assume you're planning one next year. I hope so, absolutely. You know, 
innovation is global and travel is global. And by no means do we want to only highlight American innovators. So we, of course, we have non-American innovators here in Vegas as well. But August in Las Vegas can be hard sometimes for people around the world to make it. So the whole point of the regional summit is to do a deep dive on innovation and innovators in that market and which that you, part. Which of you it. did in Dubai. You had a lot of the, the lo lo more local innovators. And then, of course, you had even more here. But is that something you're going to continue? I sure hope so. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else? Any other takeaways from the tech summit this year? Yeah, the one thing I'll add is another new thing we did this year was bring virtuoso members, so agency owners and executives on stage, to talk about AI development they're doing in-house. This is something we could not have done two or three years ago, and it was so impressive to see the incredible innovation happening within our agencies, and we only highlighted four, but there are many, many others. One of the things I've spent so much time this week doing is sitting down with both members and partners to hear about what they're developing in-house, and I have to tell you, I've been blown away. Mm -hmm. No, they really are adapting, and of course, I think travel advisors have always adapted to technology, and that's one of the, I mean, and, and uh, they really were innovators in the beginning of the profession, if you go back in the history of all this with GDSs and everything else. Uh, one of the biggest technologies uh, companies in the world, Sabre, uh, was developed to serve travel advisors, and, and so now we have a lot of other things going on, whether it's AI or other uh, areas of technology, but I promise you, next year, I'm going to make it, I'm going to get there, hopefully I'll get a, a chance to See the, do you, are you going to do one at the next uh, uh, the next uh, symposium? I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, I'll I'll start there and then hopefully get back here in Vegas to to see. And I definitely want to go because I really was looking forward to it. But again, congratulations on a very successful uh, technolo you. technology summit here at Virtuoso. And again, it's it really is one of the places I, I I don't know anything like it to be honest with you. Where there I mean, there's a couple of other conferences that yeah. we know about, but uh, you guys do a great job. Yeah. Thank you. And really, the differentiator. I, I speak. At a lot of events, and I love many of those events that we have around the world, but focusing on where we can use technology to elevate the human connection, to focus on human creativity, there's no other event in the world that does that other than the Tech Summit here at Travel Week. Fantastic. Again, Gilad, great to see you as always, because we're hanging out for 10 years here now. Uh, I'm James Schillinglaw here at Virtuoso Travel Week, and this is Insider Travel Report.